Okay, thanks for checking my video out. So today I'm going to get you up and running with Sega Dreamcast in RetroArch. So I'm going to go through a few things in this setup guide. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to import your games into RetroArch and go through some video settings and also talk about file extensions and of course look at the best core that RetroArch has to offer for our Sega Dreamcast games. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, so if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe, and also like. You'll get notifications for videos once I upload them onto my channel, and it also helps me out a great deal for my channel. So let's look at this. What we're doing today is Sega Dreamcast. So what I've got here is a folder, and in the folder I have got what's known as a BIOS file. This is DC underscore boot dot bin. Now the core I'm using for this is Flycast, and this is the only file that we need for Dreamcast. Uh, Flycast, it will emulate several different Sega systems, but Dreamcast in particular only requires DC underscore boot dot bin. So what I'm going to do with this is go to my RetroArch shortcut, right click on it, open file location, and this is going to bring us into the directory of RetroArch where everything goes. And in this directory, I'm going to right click on empty space, go to new folder, and I'm just going to call this one DC. So we've got that DC folder now created. If we go inside of here, what I'm going to do is just drag in this DC underscore dot bin into that new DC folder I've created with RetroArch. Next thing I've got on my desktop is a couple of Dreamcast games. Now we've got Street Fighter 3 Third Strike here and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, probably two of the best uh, Dreamcast games. And you'll notice these are in .chd file extension. So for those of you not aware, .chd file extension or in .chd format reduces the size of your games so when you rip your games or whatever you do with them just make sure you convert them to .chd it really compresses the size uh, extension wise flycast in retroarch accepts a lot of different file extensions we got .cdi .gdi .chd obviously .bin.q .elf .zip .7zip uh, .dat and .m3u so it's pretty much accepting every file extension you can get for uh, Sega Dreamcast. So what I'm gonna do then is just open up RetroWatch itself. And I'm gonna treat you like this is your first time doing this. So first of all, we need to download what's called a core. And a core is kind of like a emulator which RetroWatch uses. So to do this, I'm gonna just go down to online updater. And from this section here, I'm gonna to go to core downloader. And this is going to bring up every core for RetroArch, and you've got a lot here. So what I'm specifically looking for then is Sega Dreamcast, and we're looking for the Flycast core. So here's our Sega section, and we got Dreamcast, Naomi, Flycast. And like I said just a minute ago, uh, Flycast also supports a couple of other Sega systems, as we can see here. So what you need to do is just press your button. I'm pressing enter on my keyboard and this is going to download and install Flycast into RetroArch. And you'll notice once you've done this, you'll get a hashtag at the end, which indicates that it's been downloaded and installed. So once that's been done, what we're going to do is just back out and I'm pressing circle now on my PlayStation 3 controller. And what I'm going to do is just test my games to make sure Flycast is working correctly and that BIOS file is installed correctly. So what I'm going to do is firstly go to loads content and my games are on my desktop, which is in my C drive. And from C drive, I'm going to be going down to users. And then I'm going to go to my computer's name, which is Jamie, and then down to desktop because that's where my games are. And here we go. We got DC games, and here's my two games, Street Fighter 3 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. So I'm going to select Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And the next part is suggested cores. Now, this is a bit over the place. Um, you know, most of these cores here aren't going to be working with uh, Sega Dreamcast games. So I'm going to just scroll down to Sega Dreamcast Naomi Flycast. And just select this one. 
And this should boot straight in. And here we go. So as we can see, that's working fine. I'm a little bit out of practice with that, but trust me, back in the early 2000s, that's a game I'll play over and over again. Uh, massive fan of Tony Hawk's 2 back in the day. Probably the best Tony Hawk's game there is. So we're back at Quick Menu, and I've accessed this menu by pressing PS button on my PlayStation 3 controller. And what we're going to do next is actually import our games, so we don't have to go through that process every time. So to import games into RetroArch, what we're going to do it's just go down to import content, scan directory, and they're on my C drive. And we're now going to go back to users and name my computer again is Jamie. And I'm looking for my desktop, which is where my two games are located. And my DC games are here. Now scan this directory and it's scanning both of my games. And if we back out by pressing circle, I now have Dreamcast added onto my RetroWatch tabs on the site with my two games here. Awesome stuff. So let's take a look at the video settings. So we've got our Dreamcast games imported. And what I'm going to do is select one of my games. And I'm going to go through these video settings. Uh, so I'm going to select Street Fighter 3 this time. And we can actually set this to run direct from Flycast rather than going into this menu, which you can see now every time. So if we just scroll down to Set Core Association, and from here, just select Flycast and run. Okay, so let's look at cleaning this up. First thing I'm going to say, if you go into the quick menu, which I'm in now and I'm accessing this by pressing a PS button on my controller, we can actually save states and load states. So if we go to state slot, we got around a thousand different save slots here, which acts a little bit like blocks on a memory card. So let's just leave this one to auto for now. And I'm going to just press on save state and the game's going to start again. <laughs> Now, if I go back into the quick menu and go to load state, making sure that state slot is on auto, which is going to be choosing zero. If I go back to load state. So that's a little feature that uh, RetroWatch is really good at doing save states and load states. So we're actually here to look at video settings. So I'm going to just back out of all this entirely, go to main menu, and let's go into quick menu from here. And if I scroll down until I get to core options, from here, I can go to video. Now, internal resolution is the really good one here, but if you've got a lower end computer system, then, you know, if you bump this right up to uh, 4K internal resolution and beyond, it's likely going to stutter. So you can give it a go, but just be warned that games might start to lag. And if I come back at this and go to quick menu or resume. Weak. Are you ready? Go. As you can see, it's starting to look a lot fresher. So I'm going to go back out of here again and go to quick menu, go back down to core options, video, whoops, video. 
And I'm going to go back to internal resolution and I'm really going to take the biscuit and push this one up to randomly. And that one's working fine on my computer. I've got a gaming laptop and the specs are pretty good. So I'm going to just bump this up to this random internal resolution. Let's take a look at this. Now, if you notice, there's a slight lag just there and it doesn't sound so crisp. So if this happens to you, then really it's just a case of playing around with core options, video and your internal resolution. So I'm going to put this one back to here. And what I'm going to do next is look at cable types. So for those Dreamcast or Score fans out there, you'll probably know the difference between these options, VGA, RGB and Composite. So I'm going to go for VGA on this. Uh, we've also got broadcast standards, so NTSC is a little bit faster than PAL, and obviously PAL being a British European type connection, broadcast connection, where NTSC is Northern American, American I think. So if you want faster gameplay, then NTSC is the way to go, which I'm going to leave this for as and if we go down a little bit further under video, we've got anastrophic filtering. Uh, this one's currently on 4, and it enhances the texture quality. And again, just like internal resolution, if you put this one up to 16, there's a good chance things is going to lag again. I'm going to try 16 and check this one out. So 16, and if I go back, quick menu, resume. <laughs> And that's working perfectly for me, but just because it's working okay on my gaming laptop, if you've got lower specs, then it will likely lag. So let's go back out of here, quick menu, and let's take a look at some more options for video settings, core options, video, and next up, just past anastrophic filter, and we got texture filtering. Now I'm gonna put this one to linear and check this out. Quick menu. <laughs> And as you can see, the image isn't right. So just go very careful with certain settings that you're going for on this. And to get a bit more out of your video settings, we're going to go down to texture upscaling, which is again in video. And we can change this to two times, four times, six times. Again, I'll warn you that if you go up too high and your computer can take it then it's going to lag or even crash i'm going to go for four times and as we can see that's looking really sharp now really good and most of those pixels have now disappeared so again i'm going to go to quick menu core options video and finally, under video settings, what we're going to do next is look at texture upscaling. So if we go onto this, we've got three different options here. And this is going to really bring out the textures in our games. Now, if you go to 1024, there's a good likelihood that your textures aren't going to look so great. So I'm going to go to 512 and just back out and test this once more. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, next thing I want to show you is how to change aspect ratio. So to do this, go back to quick menu, settings, video, and I'm going to go down to scaling. Now aspect ratio is currently set to full. Uh, we can change how this looks. So traditionally, this game would have been presented in 4 by 3 And as you can see in the background, it's now changed, which might make it look better. So let's test this. Main menu, quick menu. So as you can see, it looks more condensed and it does look slightly better. But there's other settings under literally the settings menu we can play with under scaling. So we got this set to 4 by 3 and integral scale is actually on. If we turn this one off, the screen's going to enhance, it's going to look slightly bigger. And integral scale just blurs things a little bit. So let's check this with this check to off. And once again, under settings, I'm going to go to video and down to scaling. And I'm going to just test this one on 16 by 9. No, no, no. 
Okay, so that's the basics of getting your video settings up together. There's a lot there to consider. So what I'm going to do next is just close out this game. So to do that, main menu, quick menu, and close content. And we're back into Retro Watch interface again. So I'm going to test these same settings on the Tony Hawk's game. Uh, I think some 3D games benefit from a little bit of video enhancement. So Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, run. And I'm going to set the core association to this one. So we don't have to go through this suggested core situation each time. So fly cast, run. So as we can see, Tony Hawk's 2 is looking superb now, and I apologise for the poor gameplay there, but it's been a little while. And last thing, finally, just make sure you go to main menu, configuration file, and save all your settings by pressing on save configuration. You don't want to lose any of this. So that's it for my RetroArch and Sega Dreamcast Flycast setup guide today. There's been a lot there today with regards to video settings, but different cores on RetroArch has different options, especially where video is concerned. So like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit notifications and subscribe and like. You'll get content as I release it. And also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram. And for those of you unaware, I've got a live session coming on my channel on the 31st of August at 9pm and of course that's in the UK but until next time, stay retro